At first glance, the old barge docked at the Mare Island Naval Shipyard looks like it's just taking a breather on its slow journey to the scrapyard. But below deck, workers scoop out the barges' insides. In just a couple of months, the old vessel should look a little something like this. Other companies have tried to build their own versions of this ship, and until now, all have failed. This is the world's first highly efficient, highly sustainable waterborne data center. Whether they're the size of an airplane hangar or tiny closets tucked away in the basement, data centers house rows and rows of disk arrays and routers, the building blocks of the internet that store and transmit our data. Every time you update your profile, every time you email your buddy, every time you binge watch your favorite show, Somewhere in a dark room in a building far away, lights flicker, servers whir, and the air conditioner roars. You are seeing the future, you're seeing the revolution, you're seeing the next generation. What makes this data center so special isn't just that it's in the ocean, but the fact that it will be cooled by the very water upon which it floats. So this is our heat exchange. The water is piped behind the server racks, absorbing heat five times more efficiently, says the company's CEO, than moving cold air. It simply transfers from heat from here to the water here and it gets expelled. It's like air conditioning. Exactly, exactly. The Nautilus barge is an attempt to solve a problem most people didn't even know existed. Every year we use more data, and every year the number of data centers grows. The sound, that's the sound of electricity being sucked from the grid. In 2000, before streaming companies like Netflix, data centers accounted for 1% of US power consumption. By 2015, that number tripled. For every unit of energy that goes into powering IT in a average data center, you need another unit of uh, energy to cool the data center down. Pierre Del Forge studies tech sector efficiency. Turns out most data centers aren't efficient at all. Data centers are designed to handle peak load, but they're constantly cooled like every day is Cyber Monday. The problem is the other 364 days in the year, they're, they're still running all the servers. They're not powering them down even when they're not needed. That's because most people who run corporate data centers aren't responsible for how much energy their IT systems use. They're judged on reliability and speed. Facebook has become an integral part You'd think the villain in the black hat would be the internet giants like Facebook. To handle the company's one trillion page views each month, Facebook operates several server farms, some of which are about the size of six football fields. But big companies have big energy bills, so they have an incentive to cut the amount of power their data centers use. Facebook, for example. Over the last year or so, it's figured out how to save $2 billion. We open up the, the window on one side and blow the hot air out. We open up the door on the other side and bring in cool air from outside. It turns out these massive companies aren't really the problem. The cloud computing companies like Facebook, Google and others, they're only responsible for but collectively about 5% of all data center energy use. It may be counterintuitive, but it's the hundreds of thousands of small, ordinary companies that account for half of the energy used by data centers. New servers are generating less heat. Modern data centers are being cooled more efficiently. But the problem is the progress is being outpaced by the you know, rapid growth of the industry. The thing that worries him, the thing that keeps many in the industry up late at night, is a theory called the Jevons Paradox. When technology improves energy efficiency, consumption doesn't go down, it actually goes up. Wendy? So what about the cloud then, uh, Kim? I mean, that's an increasingly popular option. Could it be used to help limit the power usage? Well, yeah, that's exactly right. The thinking is if companies can store their data remotely on the cloud, well, they can get rid of a lot of that data center infrastructure. But that solution isn't for everyone. Many companies and institutions like hospitals, for example, are legally required to protect the confidentiality and security of their data so they wouldn't be able to trust an off-site cloud-based company. But for many small and medium-sized companies, it would definitely reduce the number of idle servers out there, that robot army of close to 15 million strong waiting for orders that rarely ever come. Wendy? Thanks so much, Kim. Kim Brunhuber.